Okay, so we will try to fix this problem with the Riemann integration. And first, I will outline to you a sort of a naive approach which was first suggested. Uh, so, this slide will be called Measures uh, Naive Approach. So, I'll do it by, by, by first uh, drawing your attention to again to this Dirichlet function. Uh, remember that Dirichlet function was the one example of the function which wasn't Riemann integrable. And uh, I told you that actually this function has a representation like this. It's just the sum of all rational numbers. Remember that the rational numbers, are they in fact, it's a countable set. So in fact, I can index every rational number with the integer, uh, like this, for instance, r sub k. So if I have this as a rational number, I can represent my Dirichlet function as the sum of all these indicator functions of the one point one rational point sets. So people said like this. Uh, people start thinking like this. What if I, what if I just try to assign some numerical value to this indicator function, or numerical value to this underlying set? Yeah, let me just just make this clear for you that if I have a subset of the set X, and then the indicator of this subset, indicator function uh, over this subset is the one, is the function which returns 1, which returns 1, if point X belongs to this subset, and it would sum which returns 0, um, Returns zero if x doesn't belong to this set. That's what the indicator function is by definition. So they look at the Dirichlet function and just they just decided to focus to get uh, to focus on a simpler task. Of considering function like this, so the functions which are maybe infinite but still sums of indicator functions. For uh, simplicity reasons, of course, the a here is in general is a complex numbers, and a1, a2, and capital A1, capital A2, some subsets of set X. If you haven't seen this notation before, I suggest you to get used to it. Uh, if you have a set, if you have a set, 2 to the power x, that's a symbol, which represents the set of all, all subsets of the set x. So if I take all possible subsets, if I combine them together as a set, that's a typical notation for this new structure. And of course, here, just to avoid confusion, people assume that these, these sets, they pairwise, pairwise orthogon, uh, sorry, pairwise disjoint, so any Two of them do not intersect. They have nothing in common, as long as they're different. So, what I said is this: by the by inspired or just uh, inspired by by the example of the Dirichlet function. So let's just look at the function like this, which is the sum of indicators, just join the indicators. If you just in fact they have a name for this function, they call it a simple function. They call it a simple function, simple function. And they said, let's just first try to find some replacement of Riemann integration for such simple functions, which will have nice properties like comparison and mm, limit property. Those two properties which uh, the canonical Riemann integration fails. Well, in order to do that, just again inspired by the construction of Riemann integration, they said we need some we need a function. We need a function with a property with a property. We need a special function M, which is defined on this set of all subsets and which returns non-negative numbers. And this function must have this extra property because we need to measure the sort of the length of this integrator somehow. And we said, okay, we'll just let's just try to find a function which we call measure, which will play the role of the length. So it's a function which has this extra property, which we call additivity. It's a property which is called additivity. 
it's the, it says that the measure of a union is the sum of measures of individual elements of your union, provided that the elements disjoint, do not intersect. If we had such a function, then length, for instance, is a, in length is a tricky business, but it, at least it has something like this. If you have two intervals, the length of two intervals will be equal to the sum of the two of components of, of this interval. If we have a function, if we have a measure function, additive function of subsets like this, then integral can probably be defined like this. Integral over the set x, and this time it can be any set, can be defined like a sum of these coefficients times the measure of individual a k sets. That was initial approach to the problem of Riemann integration. They said rather than doing Riemann integration, let's just find a function with this additivity property, and then this function will let us define integration, at least in the setting of the simple or simple functions, like this. It resembles Riemann integration, but now we just use some measure to, to measure the subsets, not specifically intervals, but subsets. If you had such a function, then for instance for the Dirichlet function, the integral will be associated with the sum like this, just the measures of individual points. Whatever that measures will, will whatever that function whatever that function m will return for this individual one point subsets. Well, you can find examples of such function. You can find examples of such additive function on subsets. Um, I have a few examples here, some of them rather interesting. A trivial example, the first one I have, is the just a trivially zero function. This is a function on all subsets which returns non-negative numbers and the one which has obviously has additivity property, zero equals zero plus zero, no matter what. Of course, for that for such a trivial function the integral will be just trivially zero. So although it's a good valid example, it is of no interest to, to for the analysis. Uh, to show you more substantial examples, I'll probably just consider a special case when x is just integral 0, 1. Initially, I didn't put any restrictions on the set s. It, can be, it, it could be anything. But when the set is 0, 1, the second example I want to show you, uh, it will be the this example. Look at this. Measure of a set A, of a set A, of a subset of 0, 1, will be equal to 1 when subset A has the point one half in it, and it will be 0 in any other case. That's a kind of, that's a kind of function I consider. It, it is an easy exercise, in fact, I'm not going to do it, I'll leave it for you to check, that this will be additive function. It just built, it's it's almost almost like a median because if you have point one half, this one half point, if your A and B disjoint, one half may fall into one of them at most. So if one half falls into the set A, then this term will be one, this will be zero, this will be one. And all other possibilities are checked similarly. More interesting observation is that actually the integral of a function of with respect to such measure will always return the value of the function the point one half. It's another interesting thing for you to check. Well, it's again, it's relatively easy because when you consider this simple function, I mean, if I consider a simple function, point one half will be a member of only one set AK because they all pairwise disjoint. And then the integral will return you exactly that coefficient AK for which the capital AK set has one point one half. This example is called a point measure, point measure which is focused at the point one half. This example actually can be extended for the further, like this. And that's the example number three which I have for you. If I have now not one point, but I have if I have n fixed point points in the intro zero one, and if I have n fixed non-negative numbers, I can define a measure like this. 
measure of set A will be sum of all those indices K for which the corresponding XK point belongs to the set A, and the sum will have all of these AK numbers. This is the extension or generalization of this example. Example number two is the, it is example number three with only one point here, one half, and with only one number here, one. It is a good thing to check or like a good exercise to verify that this measure, which is called point measure, or point mass measure, it's called point mass measure, is in fact additive function of sets. And the other good thing, thing to check, this is this, obviously this is the this is true for any subset of zero one. The other good thing to check is that if you consider this kind of integral for this for this function, the integral is in fact will be if the function is simple of course, the integral is in fact will be sum of the values of your function at every x k point multiplied by the a k coefficients. Uh, just to avoid the confusion, I just want to want to just to emphasize for you that this a k coefficients have not have, uh, have nothing to do with this a k coefficients. Probably, it would be a good idea if I just just change the notation. Let's just do it. I just just to avoid the confusion. Let me just remove this point. We one b and let me just change the number of them. Ra, ah, yeah, that's all right. B n. Will do. So here will be rather than AK, it will be BK, and obviously here will be rather than AK, it will be BK. This is just this is better. Just this this way you will avoid confusion because in fact these these points have no have, have nothing to do with these points. 